Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Bouchard. The uh, Premiership of Ontario is uh, coming up, and it would be fun if a francophone would help, it would be the Premier. <laughs> the plan in Ontario seeks to improve planification, planning in Ontario, and this strategy includes the services in French, which act which receives royal assent earlier. There were objectives such as increasing, increasing bilingual workforce. There was also, in, with healthcare professionals, there was the service delivery, including a digital uh, service offer in the healthcare field. Where, what progress has the government made with regard to these recommendations? I understand it has requirements, but to which point is the government open to meet these needs and requirements under the Ontarian strategy. I often ask the same questions. Thank you very much for your question. The Ontarian strategy for services in French is certainly a great example of planning to improve services in the medium and long terms. I meet with several organizations who provide health care in Ontario, whether I'm talking about clinics, or hospitals, I also meet with nurses, etc. Generally speaking, what I ask them is what is really known about Ontario's health care system. What is known about the, our institution's bilingual capacity, the true bilingual capacity. That is, the all people who can offer services in French will not necessarily step forward and say they will. What kind of career advancements are possible for people in bilingual positions. Bilingual positions are hard to staff. These people tend to spend a lot of time working those same positions. What is known about the quality of the work, the schedules, the ability to provide care in places where there are not always francophones available. I'm talking about holidays, night shifts, etc. There are places where the labor shortage is even more significant. What about the ratio between patients and professionals when French is the language? Are they able to provide the service in our institution? This type of information is not all that available from what I've seen up to now, and we've asked these questions. I would encourage the government of Ontario, as part of their intergovernmental collaboration mission to ask these questions and find what progress would mean for the system. Of course, we need a workforce. We need francophone workers. There are labor shortages at several levels. But how can we be effective if we don't know the starting point? Thank you. I think that you've made a very clear answer. And it is a bit echoes what the previous panel said, that is that the lack of data would affect the implementation of strategies. The second question I'd like to ask is the following. Based on my understanding, the often between, is the collaboration between uh, long-term care and others on the uh, services in French. There are certain institutions here in Ottawa that are designated as francophone institutions that offer primarily services to francophones, especially in long-term care. But when we see these names on the waiting list, as soon as there is a name that frees up in a francophone institution, then that place becomes the next place where someone will be sent, regardless of, their la of the language they speak. What kind of strategies could be implemented to protect these places that could be dedicated to patients that need long-term care, could these places be reserved for francophones? The office that you mentioned is created after the French Language Services Act. It requires every ministry to have a French service coordinator that provides advice on the institution's obligations under the law. The ministry has the tools in order to properly plan and to examine the impacts of its, of its investments. 
but resources need to be optimally used. When we say that a service is available, but that service is not necessarily used by francophones, either because the need is not there, or because a series of events cause the fact that there's a surplus of inventory for francophone people. That is what I often see. And then services that should be offered to francophones is offered to other people who need them. Am I interrupting you? Well, I'm actually the one who's interrupting you. But under the new Bill 7, uh, this is no longer applied. So can you make a link with that too? Uh, their ability to have a direct impact on the healthcare sector is limited under the French Language Services Act as long as the organization has not been designated. So the province needs to work with designated centers. And this is where we can possibly increase the amount of services offered. When the government of Ontario decides to earmark beds in long-term care homes, that is not necessarily linked to the French Language Services Act. These beds are often housed in designated organizations that can provide French services. That is not the case for all organizations. And that is because of different pieces of legislation, such as Law 7 that you just talked about. Realistically, we need to understand that some resources are available and these resources need to be maximized. And that is why we put so much emphasis on planning. Since I started my role at the Office of the Ontario Ombudsman, the lack of planning means that there are no discussions about how these resources are sent and regulated. I will keep talking about long-term care homes. If a bed is sent to a long-term care home that is not designated under the law, can French service be provided to this bed? So our ability to intervene under the FLSA is limited, and that is why we ask ministries to plan. This will create discussions in order to make sure that financial resources, technical and human resources, will be assigned in order to make sure that French francophones will have access to the service that they, they are entitled to.